I'm Kelly Meyer, and this is Kelly in the Capitol on News Nation. Each week, I'll take you both inside Washington and out of the DC bubble to hear what people are really saying. You've read the headlines, but I'll give you the real story as well as bonus content. Thanks for joining me. This is Kelly in the Capitol on News Nation. Hey guys, Kelly Meyer coming to you from the White House grounds for the state visit this week, you can see, with Japan. Well, actually, official visit and a state dinner because he is not the head uh, of state in Japan, that's the emperor of Japan. So it's actually uh, just the visit of the prime minister here to the White House with a state dinner along with that. So that's a little fun fact that I learned this week as I've been nerding out over this state dinner and the visit of Japanese Prime Minister Fumo Kishida here to the White House. We were inside the Rose Garden uh, for the press conference. We have all the details on the state dinner uh, and the trilateral meeting between the US, Japan, and the Philippines as they are working to counter the threat uh, from China. So we're covering all of that here from the White House. The biggest takeaway from this visit is how they are investing in uh, more defense capabilities uh, and the military cooperation between the two main countries here, U.S. and Japan, but also the Philippines. You may hear people chanting outside, uh, protesters outside of the White House uh, about the Philippines visit here today, too. Um, so we're going to get into all of this, uh, recap a little bit of the visit, the arrival ceremony, uh, the Oval Office meeting between the two leaders, the U.S. and Japan, the Rose Garden press conference that we were inside, and a little bit more detail from the state dinner uh, where Paul Simon performed, and they had a theme of cherry blossoms, which was a theme throughout the night. So let's dive right in.
Distinguished guests, please be seated. Okay, so Japan's Prime Minister arrived at the White House on Tuesday, and they did this gift exchange. So the Bidens presented the Prime Minister with a three-legged table handmade by a Japanese-American-owned company in Pennsylvania. And the President was also gifting Kushida a custom-framed lithograph and a two-volume LP set autographed by Billy Joel. Jill Biden was giving Mrs. Kushida a soccer ball signed by the U.S. women's national team and the Japanese women's national team. So the overall theme for this was, of course, cherry blossoms, the gift from Japan to the United States back in around 1912, uh, about over 100 years ago. And they were focusing on this sense of friendship uh, and that it's still blossoming, the relationship between the U.S. and Japan. So that flowed in throughout the ceremony. Here's President Biden talking at the official arrival ceremony on Wednesday morning. Jill and I took a stroll down the driveway across the lawn here at the White House to visit three cherry blossom trees. One that Jill and Mrs. Kushida planted together a year ago. The other two are among the 250 new trees that Japan is giving the United States to honor our 250th birthday two years from now. They'll be planted at the Tidal Basin, not far from the Martin Luther King Memorial. And like our friendship, these trees are timeless, inspiring, and thriving. So it was a busy day here on Wednesday after the official arrival ceremony. Then they headed into the Oval Office for their private one-on-one -on -one meeting. Uh, so a lot to cover in that. They said there were about 70 deliverables. Uh, this included partnering together on uh, defensive capabilities. Uh, that alliance, they say, is stronger than ever before. They talked a lot about working together on AI and space, uh, making sure that they send the first Japanese astronaut to the moon. Um, so there was a a lot of ground covered inside that meeting and afterwards they came out to the rose garden where i was sitting uh out there i had a seat inside that uh or outside the oval office in the rose garden for that press conference uh, we didn't get a question in but uh president biden had the chance to share what they talked about here's a little bit about what he had to say together our countries are taking significant steps to strengthen defense security cooperation we're modernizing command and control structures and to increase the interoperability and planning of our militaries that so they can work together in a seamless and effective way. Then it was on to the fun part, which was the state dinner and the official business all put aside. Then they were able to put on their dresses, come back into the White House and enjoy a beautiful state dinner. All the pomp and circumstance comes out. We were standing outside of the White House as they did the arrival, official arrival for the state dinner. You saw the cars pull out in front of the North Portico at the White House. Uh, Mr. And Mrs. Kashida, Prime Minister Kashida and his wife get out of the car in their dresses and, and tuxes. Same for President Biden and First Lady Jill Biden came out to meet him uh, and his wife and it welcomed them into the White House. They do this picture on the staircase together, that official portrait, and then they welcome them inside with about 230 guests. And the First Lady gave a little preview uh, to some of the reporters, including News Nation, about what the state dinner would entail and who would be invited. So we know some of the highlights of who came there uh, to the state dinner. Jeff Bezos from Amazon, Bill and Hillary Clinton, uh, Tim Cook from Apple, uh, Christy Yamaguchi, uh, Secretary Yellen, uh, Robert De Niro was even inside. Um, the dinner itself uh, was set to highlight, they say, Japanese-American fusion. So the White House executive chef uh, said the inspiration for the first course was house-cured salmon with avocados, red grapefruit, watermelon radish, and cucumber. It was the iconic American California roll. And the main dish, dried aged ribeye steak with blistered shishito pepper butter. And that was served on China dating back to the administrations of Presidents George W. Bush and Lyndon B. Johnson. Fun fact, you have to serve uh, two times or two terms to uh, get China named after you. And then dessert, 
if I'm not already getting your mouth watering, salted caramel pistachio cake with a matcha grenache, cherry ice cream, and raspberry drizzle meant to symbolize, again, the cherry blossoms, which were adorning each of the tables. And then at the end, the guests were serenaded by Paul Simon. But President Biden did give a toast in there with the Prime Minister of Japan and shared a little bit about what Japan meant to him as he came into office. Take a listen to this. Our countries. What, 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 both, what both our countries hold dear, new beginnings. So thank you again for being here. And uh, a few days after my inauguration over three years ago, I received a big, shiny blue and red envelope covered with stickers on the envelope. It was a big envelope, and it was full of letters from elementary school teacher in Japan who compiled them from her students. She teaches children who stutter, like I did as a child. And she wanted them, me to know that when she told them, her class, about that I had a similar liability at the time, the kids lit up smiling and they said, we're the same, we're the same. Well, we are the same, Japan and the United States. Many, we may be divided by distance, but the generations after generation, we've been brought together the same hopes, the same values, the same commitment to democracy and freedom and the digni dignity for all. And today, without question, our alliance is literally stronger than it has ever been. This was both not inevitable, but it was also the fact is that both the Prime Minister and I came of age as our countries were, as they came together. We both remember the choices that were made to forge a friendship that were once only a devastating a fight that existed before. We both remember that hard work, what it has done to find healing and where there was once such hardship. We both remember Japanese and American people who not only brought us together, but who brought us forward, transforming our relationship for better, from bitter foes to the best friends could be. Tonight, we pledge to keep going. We stand at an inflection point where the decisions we make now are going to determine the course of the future for decades to come, a future that the kids of our two families and children and all of, all of our two countries remember. But I also know that Japan and the United States stand together, and everyone should know that as well, committed to each other and committed to keeping building a future worthy of the highest hopes and, and of, that our, of our predecessors and our people dreamed of. Ladies and gentlemen, so please join me and raising your glass, and I don't have a glass. It is a <laughs> there you go. You have one for the Prime Minister? Thank you. Join me in raising your glasses to our alliance, to our friendship, and the words of those young students in Japan to the same future we share. Cheers. Cheers. Turn it over to you, Mr. Prime Minister. Mr. President, Dr. Biden, distinguished guests, and ladies and gentlemen, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to you for hosting such a wonderful dinner and your warm welcome and hospitality. Before I came here, my protocol staff told me that no one had ever complained about that my speech was too short. <laughs> uh, this is probably good advice, so I'll keep my speech short. First and foremost, to be honest, my breath is taken and I'm speechless in front of such a huge number of prominent American and Japanese guests. Uh, my wife, Yuko, uh, also left breathless, just told me that it was hard to tell who the guest of honor is. 
So I was relieved that when I was shown the seat right next to the president. <laughs> uh, last year, President Biden and Dr. Biden uh, visited my hometown of Hiroshima to attend the G7 summit meeting. It is a little known fact that the largest number of Japanese immigrants to the United States came from Hiroshima. Many Hiroshimans headed to the United States to seek a new world, a better future, and greater heights. Uh, Mr. President, I know that the late uh, Senator Daniel Inoue was a good friend of yours. His mother was also from Hiroshima. Uh, looking back at the long history of Japan and the United States, our predecessors have carved out the path in various fields such as business, academia, art, and sports, uh, traveling back and forth between the two countries. The Pacific Ocean does not separate Japan and the United States. Rather, it unites us. These were the words that President Kennedy sent to Prime Minister Ikeda, also hailing from Hiroshima, at the state luncheon held at the White House about 60 years ago. I like this line. I, I use it so many times that my staff tried deleting it whenever <laughs> this phrase appeared on speech drafts. However, there is nothing that expresses our relationship as visibly as this. And never have these words been more relevant than today. Japan and the United States are united than ever before. I believe that the Pacific Ocean has brought Japan and the United States together and so close because of the pioneering spirit of those who came before us and frontier spirit that we all have in common. The success of those standing on the frontier uh, is not just because of their individual efforts, but also uh, the result of collective efforts as a team. This, ho this holds true even between nations. Our joint efforts are variable and dispensable for our bright future and for the peace and stability of the world. We are now standing at the turning point in history, embarking on a new frontier on elevate this unshakable Japan-US relationship to even greater heights and hand it to the next generation. And finally, let me conclude with a line from Star Trek, <laughs> uh, which you all know. To boldly go where no one has gone before. <laughs> By the way, Joji Takei, who played Hikaru Suru, the helmsman of the USS Enterprise, also has roots in Hiroshima. <laughs> Thank you.
Mr. President, Dr. Biden, uh, distinguished guests and ladies and gentlemen. I would like to propose a toast to our voyage to the frontier of the Japan-U.S. relationship with this world. Bold ego. Bodhi go. Cheers. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so now I'm here in our tent at the White House uh, as the trilateral meeting between the United States, Japan, and the Philippines is getting underway. That's the last real piece of this. Prime Minister Kishida also spoke to a joint meeting of Congress. Uh, he urged them there to support Ukraine, saying that Ukraine today is... Uh, East Asia tomorrow, basically saying that if Russia is successful in defeating Ukraine, that other great powers are watching and may take that example uh, with what's happening with China and Taiwan. Uh, so the security and safety of the Indo-Pacific, a major focus of this summit, of the uh, the first leader summit of the US, Japan, and the Philippines. Um, so we're gonna be following all the latest developments from that President Biden, saying that he is going to continue speaking with China's President Xi Jinping, that they have this close communication. We'll see what this means in the days to come. A question I would have had in the briefing today was, does this trilateral summit really maybe escalate tensions more with China uh, as we're trying to really balance between communicating with them but also deterring any kind of aggression in the South China Sea and the East China Sea to keep them from invading Taiwan and to keep them from uh, you know, escalating tensions with the Philippines and with Japan as they've been seeing some more aggressive military maneuvers in the Pacific. So we're gonna keep following all of that, um, but I hope you got a little insight into what happened here at the White House this week during the official visit of Japan's Prime Minister and the state dinner. So any questions, let me know. Thanks for spending some time with me. To see what I'm up to next, make sure you tune in to News Nation. Don't know how to watch us? Go to www.joinnn.com. Pop in your zip code and the channel finder will know just where to find us. But don't forget, we're also on all streamers, Hulu, Roku, YouTube TV, as well as Amazon Alexa and Apple CarPlay. Have a story you think I need to know about? Then drop me a note at kmeyer at newsnationnow.com. This is News Nation's Kelly Meyer, and you've been listening to Kelly in the Capitol. Thank you.